Why is the South so much different than the rest of the United States? Every region and subregion in the US has cultural differences and quirks that might be considered odd in other regions. The poster child for this, of course, is the Deep South, Georgia, Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana, and South Carolina. Other Southern states have some of the same differences, they just have a little bit more in the Deep South. We ran a survey and asked what region is the most unique when you compare it to the other regions in the US. The South won by a landslide. In this video, we're gonna explore what those differences are. Some of you will see some of these things in other regions, but they're probably not as big a deal as it is in the South, in the Deep South. When I was in college, I did a few papers on this subject, and I was heavy into cultural geography. After World War II and US presidents, the cultural differences between the regions in the United States is what I've spent a majority of my time reading about over the years. I find this fascinating, always have. So in this video, we're gonna take a look and find out why the Deep South is f***ing weird compared to the rest of the country. Got it, get it, good. Let's take a look. The history. The Southern United States is a region that has interested both its own people and outsiders for a very long time. Its rich mix of culture, history, and values make it different from the rest of the country. One of the main reasons the South is so unique its history, especially the times when there was slavery and eventually the Civil War. Before the Civil War, the southern states depended on growing crops like cotton on giant farms, and they used enslaved people to do the work. Big farms and plantations were the main source of revenue for the Deep South, and it was very profitable. I mean, when you don't have to pay your labor, anything's profitable, I guess. Even though slavery ended in the United States over 150 years ago, its effects are still seen on how different races in act and the southern way of life the civil war the civil war which for the most part was about slavery and state rights some people argue it's just about state rights well okay but you were enslaving human beings. A lot of people will argue that, that it was about state rights. It wasn't about slavery. No, they were trying to end slavery in the United States, which is 100% wrong, no matter how you explain it. So you don't have a right to do it. These days, not everyone sees things that way in the South, and I get that. But some do, and most of the United States finds that very strange. But back during the Civil War, it made Southerners feel proud that they were standing up for their state rights, at least how they saw it. A lot of that pride is still a thing in the southern states. Even today, things like the Confederate flag and statues of Confederate leaders bring up mixed feelings across the country, but they mean a lot to the people in the south. This history has shaped a strong sense of independence and a desire to keep southern traditions alive. And when you know the backstory to that, as you meet a lot of southern people, you could see where it's coming from now. You could tell that they have this big thing about independence and pride in their state or their region. The only place you'll find independence like that in the United States that's as strong as it is here are the Western states where it was kind of frontierish, like Wyoming, Montana, and Nevada. You can probably throw Idaho in there too, but I don't think it's as strong there. The Southern Drawl. Every region has their accent. Outside of Boston, there's probably no other accent that is as obvious and unique than the South. The Southern United States has a handful of different dialects, with the Deep South having two, really. The main one being Southern United States English. That's what they call it. You also have Cajun. There could be an argument, too, that New Orleans has their own. You also have Texas English, Appalachian English, Black Southern English. But what we're focusing on this one is the Southern drawl. This is a type of accent that has developed over hundreds of years, just like any accent does. But the foundation of the Southern drawl was set back in the late 1700s, early 1800s. The beginnings of this accent goes all the way back to around the mid 1700s, when wealthy British traders started to speak without the R sound in their words to show that they were from a higher social class. And you can hear that in Boston. It's a little watered down these days. I mean, the Boston accent isn't as thick as it once was but you know they say like the old jokes pock the car there's no r they kind of replace the r with an h instead of saying park the car they say pock the car I'm horrible at accents, but you know what I'm talking about. Now down in the South about the same time, things were a bit different. People from Northern England who were not as rich and settled in the South, they continued to say the R sound. This is where the Southern drawl began. It was almost like a distinction between the common man and the rich people. The rich people used it to show status and the poor people in some cases exaggerated it to show the distinction between the two. Now it is important to note that there are different accents in the South that have 
a similar accent, but they don't say the R's. There's a few other tweaks to it, and there's some sayings, and there's some words that are used there that aren't used other places. Words like fix in, which is fixing, yonder, like over yonder. Doohickey is one too. Now, a lot of people use that all over the country, but that originates in the South. Doohickey. Give me some sugar, like give me a kiss or a hug or whatever, or some sort of affection. That's a Southern saying. Also, one I've always liked and I actually used, picked it up from my family that's from the South, is carry me. Like carry me to the store, carry me home. It's not literally carrying you. It's like, give me a ride. Then, of course, outside the Deep South, you have like Texas with y'all. Quit being ugly. That's a Southern saying meaning quit being a pain in the butt. One of the absolute best things is when they use bless your heart. Now I talked about this in other videos that bless your heart is a nice thing to say to someone. Oh, bless your heart. You know, that's very common for Southerns to say, but they don't just use it as a sign of affection. They also use it as a little backhanded thing when they think you're dumb. Almost like, oh, bless his heart. He's too dumb to figure it out, but at least he's trying. That's what they kind of mean when they say bless your heart sometimes. It's one of those phrases that has many different uses. Sort of like the word dude in California. Or the F word New Jersey and New York. Also in the South, you have things like, say a Coke. I'm going to get a Coke. To Southerners... This could be any carbonated drink. It doesn't have to be a Coke. You could have in your mind, you're going to get a 7-Up, but you're going to say, I'm going to go get a Coke. Plum is another good one. She's plum tired out. She was plum crazy. It means totally or absolutely. I had a conversation about this with a British guy that used to work for my brother years ago. And I was explaining that the South, sometimes you can't understand what they're talking about if you're from other parts of the country. He said they have that in England too. It's called Manchester the economics. Economically, the South's focus on farming played a big role in making it unique. Unlike the more industrialized North, the South's economy was based on crops and farming. This created a different way of sharing money and a social system where there were clear differences between landowners, farm workers, and enslaved people back in the day. This economic gap and the reliance on farming have influenced how the South does politics and how people act, setting it apart from the more industrial North. Obviously, the South is changing now. You've got Atlanta is a pretty serious tech spot with movies being made there all the time now. Florida has some things going on. It's, it's a lot different than it used to be, but a lot of that carries over. It becomes part of their culture. People from outside the South see it. They think it's kind of strange. The South has a history of a simpler life. A lot of that has to do with that farming type lifestyle where you work the land. That's how this region of the United States started out. And that's how they became what they are today. So sure, things have changed, but that mentality and culture will stick with them forever. Religion. Religion and a strong sense of being conservative have also helped make the Southern states a little bit different. For a long time, the South has been known for its strong belief in evangelical Christianity, which really affects their lifestyle, like politics, values, and families. This has made the South more traditional and conservative on social matters, which is unlike the more open and diverse views of other parts of the country. Obviously, not everyone in the South is into religion, but more than any other part of the country, the percentages are higher here, especially in the Deep South. I mean, the Deep South is in the Bible Belt. The Bible Belt encompasses all the southern states, except for the southern tip of Texas and the southern tip of Florida, where all those immoral people are in Miami. So a lot of people from different parts of the country might find their devotion, or at least the amount of people that are into Christianity, a little odd compared to where they're from. I mean, not saying other states don't have religion. They're just a little, you know, I don't want to say feverish about it. They're just a little more into it than other parts of the country. And it's obvious. The Southern culture. The Southern culture is full of interesting things like food, music. The Southern culture has become famous all over the world. And that's how most people know about the South. It's through the music, through the food. These things have played a big role in keeping the Southern traditions alive and strong, making the region even more unique compared to the rest of the country. Many, many years ago, when the Berlin Wall came down and people started crossing just back, it was all over the news. This teenage guy, he might have been 20 or something, came across the border and they were interviewing people. And they're all, how does this feel? He's all, it's great. I'm going to go to America. That's what he, first thing he said. They're all, why do you want to go to America? Eat barbecues, Leonard Skinnerd, jeans. 
I was just like, oh my God, this guy wants to make it to America so he could see Leonard Skinner. I don't even know if they were performing back then, but still. I was like, Leonard Skinner, the guy just comes from a communist country, gets a little freedom. He's like, I'm going to see Leonard Skinner. And in case you don't know, Leonard Skinner is probably one of the most successful bands to ever come out of Alabama. That band was like the founding fathers of Southern rock. In my personal opinion, I think the music, more than anything else, has played a big part in letting the South be known outside the United States and North America. Think all the way back to B.B. King, Elvis, the Marshall Tucker Band, Charlie Daniels Band from back in the day, John Lee Hooker, Wilson Pickett, Howlin' Wolf, and even the Allman Brothers from Jacksonville, Florida. The politics. In terms of politics, the South has usually leaned more towards conservative beliefs compared to other places in the country. The South, especially the Deep South, is considered very red, very Republican. It's like they could always count on winning the Southern states, especially the Deep South. Last couple elections, Georgia's been looking a little iffy, but the rest of the Southern states are solid red states. It's like every election, you know they're going to win those, and you know the Democrats are going to win California and New York. The Southern states have been supporting conservative Republicans for decades. They just seem to fit the political views and the priorities that the Southern states want, for the most part. Whenever I say something like that, you always get a bunch of people going, well, I voted for the Democrats and I live in Mississippi. Whenever we talk about states, we're talking about averages. Everyone's different. You're always going to have some outliers. But for the most part, the South is very red. This is another strange thing that you'll find in the South and not as much in other parts of the country. People openly talk politics and they complain about politics to complete strangers, just like it's normal small talk. Some parts of the country, you'll go, how about this day? Yeah, this weather's killing me. I can't stop sweating. That's how a lot of conversations happen with people you don't know in public in most of the country. In the South, it's not terribly unusual to have a conversation with a complete stranger and they start off with these damn politicians. The country's going to hell in a handbasket, that type stuff. I've had a few people bring that up in the comment section when we've done things on Southern states or Southern cities. They'll say something like they moved to a Southern state after living in Nevada most of their life and they are surprised how openly aggressive these people are about politics and how casually they just discuss it. Most of the time people try and avoid politics with total strangers. Not in the South. Years ago, I saw a YouTube video where the guy's interviewing people, Southern people, they were living in a trailer. And this guy just starts going off about these damn politicians giving handouts to everyone and no one wants to work. And he's on a rant. And all of a sudden this woman's voice from inside was like, Charlie, what are you talking about? You've been on disability and social security for 10 years. He's all, but I need that. The way the cameraman pulled the camera away from him was just, it spoke volumes. He was just like, oh God. But politics are definitely a big difference in the South compared to other parts of the country. Sure, you have places in the Midwest that are Republican states, but they don't get into it as much as they do in the South, especially the Deep South. And I think a lot of that has to do with their distrust of the government. No other part of this country hates the government like the Southern states do. And that feeling can be traced back to the Civil War and beyond. So in conclusion, the Southern United States stands out because of its mix of history, economy, society, and politics. Slavery in the Civil War, the focus on farming, strong religious beliefs, and conservative values have all made the South have its own identity. Even as the country has changed over time, the South has held on to a lot of its traditions and ways of life, making it a region that is special and interesting in the big picture of the United States. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a great day, and be nice to each other.